Open at 618 and time now for What's Trending. A North Carolina grandfather has big plans that span the North Atlantic. He is planning to row from Virginia to France nonstop. And depending on weather conditions, 61-year-old Peter Harley says that he will embark on his journey starting next week. The boat that he is taking isn't an ordinary rowboat as it is a setup on board with a camper. Harley says that this is a boat that should be rowed by two people. He is also taking plenty of snacks for his trip, including protein bars, shakes, and pasta. Harley says that has been his diet for the last nine months to get him used to it, and the boat can also convert salt water into safe drinking water. How about that? His daughter will be keeping contact with him through satellites, and the trip is expected to take four months in total. And when asked why he wants to do it, Harley says that he was influenced by something he saw on TV. In the distance from Virginia Beach to Rouen, France, which is the southwestern city that is along the Atlantic in France, is a little more than 3,800 miles as the crow flies. And you know, how about that? What Almost a trip of a lifetime, if you ask me. I'm definitely not, not in that kind of shape to do it, so... Um, <laughs> I'll get tired after five minutes. Yeah, I'm tired after two hours of kayaking, so... <laughs> yeah, so that's quite a bit there, and that's a big boat that should be rowed by two people, so mm -hmm. at least there's like a little camper part where you can like take shelter if he needs to, and um, everything else. So my biggest question is, and I apologize to the viewers, I don't like this, Where's he gonna go to the bathroom? <laughs> oh, I think that was also converted on the on the um, boat as well. There's also a setup that he had. I just didn't mention. Ho ho story, ho so. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, he's gonna be out in the middle of nowhere. Four months at seas. Hopefully, yeah, four he's, months at uh, sea. Can do that. Get his sea legs ready to go too. So. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be ways in case something happens. I mean, you, you think you mentioned that one of his children will, will, keep, will keep an ear out on him and mm -hmm. um, make sure he's okay. So that may sound like a, a very interesting event. We'll have to, hopefully we'll get some updates on that. Yeah, for sure. I think four months from now would be in August. So late August, September, we may get a follow-up on this we, story. We, we might. We'll have to see what happens there. But meanwhile, the, the Kentucky Derby, it's almost here. Mm -hmm. It isn't the only race on the first Saturday in May. You can also enjoy the slowest <laughs> two minutes in sports. Old Forester's Kentucky Turtle Derby returns on the first Saturday in May. Eight turtles will make their way to the starting gate for the Kentucky Turtle Derby, sponsor, sponsored by Old Foresters. This will be the third annual race featuring racers with names like American Hardshell and Bayou Believing. And this year, there's something new for fans to enjoy, thanks to a partnership with DraftKings. Fans nationwide can take part in the run of the raspberries for a chance to win either their share of the full pot of $5,000. And to win that money, you have to answer questions about racers, the Kentucky Turtle Derby, Derby will run at 3 p.m. Central on Derby Day and will be streamed to 10,000 bars and restaurants nationwide. It will also be shown on the big board at Churchill Downs. The Kentucky Derby has a post time of 5.57 Central Time later on that day. So how about that? That's pretty funny that you have a, a Kentucky Turtle Derby. Look at, that, look at that poster there. That's really funny to see. Yeah, I wonder how uh, it actually goes, like if the turtles are actually like actually trying to like turtle standards at least or mm -hmm. um is it just they do whatever they want when they're released at all i don't wonder how well they're trained for that too if you want my opinion i think they do whatever they want they probably will do whatever <laughs> they want but like kentucky derby i love the kentucky derby there are a few oh, years yeah. i miss it because i never really watched the pre-game stuff beforehand or yeah. pre-race stuff yeah they were i mean it's like two minutes it's the fastest two minutes in sports and you're able to make hours production long mm -hmm. on this i well, you know, i can't remember which station has i know in the past i think it's yeah, in, nbc nbc it's, yeah, has yeah. It. i couldn't remember usually it's nbc but yeah mm -hmm. but yeah i always love the kentucky derby definitely a saturday oh, oh, yeah. tradition for sure well moving on to our next story a little more shocking Police in Ohio say a disaster was narrowly avoided when an out-of-control dump truck missed a school bus full of kids by mere inches. Police say the truck drivers realized his brakes weren't working as he was approaching the stop school bus and began downshifting and blaring his horn to alert drivers in the area, around the area, excuse me. One driver saw him and pulled off to the side. And amazingly, he was able to barely squeeze the careening truck past the bus and other vehicles, avoiding a potential accident. The truck went about another quarter mile before he came to a complete stop and investigators are looking into why the truck didn't stop to begin with and definitely a very uh, scary situation there um, 
I don't know exactly everything in, that a truck driver is supposed to do when a situation like this unfolds. To me, it sounds like he did everything he could. Blow he, the he, horn, downshift. I know I would just jam it into first gear if that ever happens. Oh, yeah. He, he, did everything, he did everything he could. Uh, definitely. I mean, thankfully, no one was hurt. So, uh, mm -hmm. thank goodness. I mean, I saw some of that video, too. A, a, truck, a truck backed up and uh, another car pulled off. But anyway, that looked pretty cool. But we got to keep going here.